Hi, my name's Rob Scott from UC Today News, and in this session, I'm joined by Thomas Laboul, who's a CEO and founder at Toku, and he's going to be sharing his perspective on the benefits of combining CCAS and CPAS technologies. Welcome, Thomas. Hi, Rob. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you, and uh, good to see you. Just before we dive in, how about we just do a quick introduction? Would you mind telling us a little bit about Toku, please? Sure. So uh, Toku is a cloud communications and a customer engagement uh, platform. We are uh, based in Singapore, focusing um, especially on uh, the APAC region. And we are uh, kind of offering all the three pillars that you today need as a company when you have communication needs, going from uh, the CPAS portion, the UCAS and the CCAS, which uh, we will uh, tackle in a minute. So basically, we are really uh, uh, targeting the enterprise segment. Um, we are looking at uh, helping customers that have a high operational complexity, a presence across uh, multiple um, countries, and also, um, if necessary, helping them with the digital transformation uh, when they have legacy systems, for example. Fantastic. Thank you. And today we said we talk about CCAS and CPAS and to industry professionals, it's, it's something that we all know what it is, but to some people out there, they may not know what CCAS and CPAS is. So just to set the scene for our viewers, would you mind just talking us through what the difference between CCAS and CPAS actually is? Yeah, correct. Um, it's indeed uh, something that is very specific to the industry. So we're, we are looking at CPAS. Uh, it means communication platform as a service. So those are uh, all the tools that we are offering to mainly product teams. So it is uh, lines of codes, APIs, SDKs, so application programming interfaces, uh, software development kits, everything that the developer will need um, for its uh, product team in order to embed communication or customer engagement capabilities directly in uh, their own application or their own uh, platform. Whereas uh, CCAS, uh, Contact Center as a Service, as the name is saying it, is mostly um, providing a graphical interface, an actual solution where you don't need to code or you don't need to develop anything. It's directly for the business uh, users um, from sales and marketing teams to more especially, of course, uh, the customer support teams. Fantastic. That was a great description. So thank you for that. And in terms of where we're going with today's conversation, we said we talk about you know, combining those two technologies and what that means for, the, for businesses, for the customer experience, ultimately. Um, I mean, first of all, what problems does CCAS and CPAS uh, solve together? Mm -hmm. Well, we need to look at um, what are the companies trying to achieve, right, with their customer engagement today, because um, we, we are dealing with um, customers and, and users that are uh, increasingly uh, having high expectations, and they should, because technology today is helping us to make customer experience as seamless as possible. And while it is uh, directly something that cloud native companies and more recent uh, sharing economy players, for example, have been tackling since the beginning as, as disruptors in their own spaces. Uh, traditional companies are a little bit lagging behind because they've been investing um, a few decades ago, maybe in other systems and on-premise uh, solutions. And so it's not that easy for them to suddenly uh, provide across different channels a customer experience that is um, equivalent uh, for, for every, um, so every uh, uh, communication channel, right? If you are talking about um, telephony, which is typically the, the basis and foundation of any communication strategy, today that's no longer sufficient. You need to mix it up with also um, OTT channels and maybe even social media channels. But what is really coming in strong uh, today is everything that you can own as a brand in terms of communication channels that you are controlling from A to Z, which is your own application. And that's also where you are providing most of your customer experience today, delivering some part of your service. So it makes sense uh, to also be able to communicate directly in uh, your app. And so far, uh, these two have been completely separated um, because most of the providers uh, that are tackling the enterprise segment for contact center um, are not the same that are also providing uh, CPaaS uh, technology. And that specialization has been uh, normal and, and justified in the past. But today, uh, brands need a, more of a one-stop shop where they can leverage on the synergies of, of both approaches. That's great. And, you know, I'm hearing more and more uh, around kind of personalization uh, in customer mm -hmm. engagement, you know, environments, um, you know, does putting these two tools together, you know, how does that help, you know, things like, you know, personalizing that customer experience, for example? Sure. And so um, 
obviously, as you said, there are different advantages. And if you look at uh, the, the first thing that any company today should do is integrating their customer data with uh, their communication channels. And so having your CRM, your ticketing system that is integrated with your communication channels is a, is a given so that you can have those primary insights uh, like the purchase history, um, what are the last tickets that they've uh, had with you, what are maybe some of their preferences, where do they live, all kinds of information that we are um, considering as the, as the primary level. But as you go deeper, um, obviously having also a, a, a communication channel that is giving you more oversight on the different touch points on how they are navigating in the application, for example, is something that is becoming more relevant and that will help improve the customer satisfaction when you are solving uh, their problems. Not only that, but you also need to um, uh, acknowledge the, the problem on the end of the user, right? So for brands, we've already consolidated uh, all the channels in an interface so that an agent can manage both asynchronous and synchronous channels from uh, the same place, seeing all the touch points that they had with the customer. But as a user, you don't have that same luxury and you don't want to be in a position where you are wondering, oh, where did I receive that information? Where did they send me the code or um, the, 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 the reset link? Was it via email? Was it via SMS? Um, was it uh, directly in WhatsApp? Um, typically, uh, you should be able to consolidate all of that information, especially for existing customers, directly in your application so that nothing needs to go out. And as a last example as well, uh, maybe to make it more uh, relatable, um, when a brand is calling you uh, from a, a contact center space, um, best case scenario, they have a local number and you, you will want to pick it up. Uh, it might be an overseas number as well, but typically it will be an unknown number to you. Whereas if you are able to uh, directly call in the application or chat in the application, um, you don't have that uh, trust issue because you directly see that it is your app, your banking app, your um, hospitality app, your uh, airline app that is calling you and that is even giving you additional information about is it the customer support department or accounting, whatever. So you can really enrich the experience uh, for, for your users. That's really interesting. Yeah, I hadn't put that you know, together before now, creating trusted connections into those contact centers you know, via embedded apps and being able to ask those questions and qualify who people are before they make their way in. Yeah, so that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I can see how that you know, ultimately improves the, the customer experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, how about automations? I mean, we've been hearing about automations in contact center environments for a long time. And you know, with the advent of AI, and now you know, AI is you know, pretty mature in the contact center environment. I mean, are we gonna be seeing more and more automation going forward, um, given that we have some, what, uncertain times ahead? You know, are contact centers able to continue to take advantage of automations or are they winding it, winding it back somewhat? Well, automation, first of all, needs to be done for the right reasons, right? Um, not everything that can be automated should be automated. And we, we've seen that um, mostly it has been driven by cost, uh, which is understandable, but cannot be the only reason that you're automating. Typically, what we like to work on with our customers is really to ensure they are uh, becoming more proactive. And that's where I was distinguishing earlier the uh, primary insights from what you can really build if you have more uh, touch points and more information that is processed through the same platform. Because you can start using AI and machine learning to detect certain patterns in order to uh, maybe uh, anticipate on, on certain needs because you've already detected that uh, mistakes have been made and that you will have a customer complaint that is going to be uh, generated uh, from the user's side. So that is the kind of more sophisticated and smart um, automation that I would expect uh, in, in the future. And also having brands that are uh, more um, intentionally selecting the, the right communication channel for the right purpose, depending on how sensitive the nature of uh, the use case is or how, uh, how timely they should actually intervene. That's really interesting. And I suppose an, another thing I wanted to touch on today was a little bit more around the agent experience with the with mm -hmm. with CPAS in the mix. I mean, can CPAS help to improve the agent experience uh, beyond what you've already mentioned? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. how how involved can CPAS get in in terms of that experience for the agent? 
No, that, that is indeed very important, right? Because um, the agents are not doing an easy job. Um, they, they are trying to help people sometimes almost blindly. Imagine someone is ex trying to explain to you what they are doing on the interface and you need to guess based on uh, their description on where they are clicking. You are not even sure that they are in the right application to begin with. Um, so it's, it's very difficult uh, to try to help them and say, look, you can go to the left, uh, try to the drop down menu, what you, sh you should see this, etc. cetera. Whenever uh, you are directly embedded within your application, those information will actually be visible uh, for the agent because you will know exactly what is happening on the screen of the user, um, given that the right permission have been uh, acknowledged, of course, but you will be able to help them with the navigation in a more efficient way than uh, just uh, going off uh, on their description that they are giving you. Well, that all sounds very good. I mean, in terms of how you package this up at Toku, I mean, could you talk us through in terms of your products there, how you take it to market uh, for your customers? Sure. So as I said, we, we are targeting uh, the enterprise segment and we, we have the advantage of um, owning uh, almost the entire uh, technology stack from uh, having a, our own carer uh, department uh, for all the connectivity aspects and navigating the regulations here in Asia, uh, which is a very fragmented uh, region uh, in, in, in that sense. And then also having built uh, directly or backend APIs on all the telecommunication equipment and digital channels ourselves. So that uh, at the end of the day, even the contact center piece is uh, built uh, from these APIs and we have uh, a real modular approach to our architecture to also make sure that um, when there are specific needs or legacy systems that need to be maintained, um, because as I said, these uh, traditional um, economy players that have been around for a long time, you cannot ask them to simply start over uh, from scratch. So we have that hybrid expertise, uh, both on the telecommunication side and the digital communication side, as well as a more consultative and bespoke approach to make sure that we are only addressing um, their pain points and uh, not uh, forcing them to completely start over from scratch and maybe um, throw away some of the, the investments they've done in the past. And I'm, I'm interested to just ask you one more question about the buyer. Is the buyer generally coming from a development uh, you know, background or is the buyer coming from kind of line of business or contact center? You know, um, where do you find, what comes first, CCAS or CPAS? Well, I would say that um, it's it's kind of a mixed bag, right? So we have um, both type of clients today in, in our portfolio. We have the customers that are uh, cloud native, that are mostly part of the sharing economy, and they have a very product driven approach where um, we are indeed going to talk to people that have some kind of development background and that are uh, talking um, as part of the product team. Whereas on the side of uh, uh, companies that have been around for longer and uh, are addressing their digital transformation. And in that sense, uh, we are going to navigate organizations that are a little bit more um, traditional in their buying um, process, where we will talk to the procurement teams first, and then we will have to make with them a, a business case. Um, so we've been entering um, organizations uh, through both paths. Sometimes the first thing that we solve is uh, something in their application and we are helping them with our uh, CPAS offering. And for others, we first addressed uh, the contact center um, solution that was needed and work on different integrations with their customer data uh, uh, bases like um, CRM, ticketing systems, and so on, before starting to add value on top of that uh, through a, a synergy and an integration with their own app. Yeah, and that does make perfect step, uh, perfect sense, one step at a time, of course, and uh, set some priorities uh, for the business. So that's great. For anyone out there looking to find out more about uh, CCAS and CPAS from Toku, what's the best way to get in touch? Well, I would definitely start with the website, uh, especially as we are also expanding internationally and looking uh, for more partners uh, on the SI side, for example. So if there are any interested uh, players uh, to, to get in touch with us and learn more about our products and see how we can collaborate, uh, the website would be a great place to start. And uh, for uh, other reasons, you can, of course, reach out to LinkedIn uh, and connect with me directly. Fantastic. And we will put a link in the description for you all to uh, jump on and take a closer look. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. However, uh, Thomas, thank you so much uh, for, for meeting me today. It's been great talking to you. It's been a pleasure too, Rob. Thank you. 
And thanks to everyone for tuning in. If you've got some good takeaways from today's session, do give us a quick mention on social and subscribe to our channel for more industry news and insights. I'm Rob Scott from UC Today. Thanks for watching.